Hi all, I have a very exciting game from TSEC Season 14 Division 1 to show you. Fizbo playing white against Leela, and the opening is the very exotic King's Engine Four Pawns attack. So it looks like a very aggressive system, but sometimes the pawns like this can leave weaknesses behind. Uh, we have Knight C3, Black Castles, Knight F3, C5, and this is the end of the book. Now usually uh, players play d5 here for example e6 bishop e2 e takes c takes bishop g4 is very common I've played this myself with black and sometimes I, I get very good games with it with the black pieces but here we have an early e5 instead of d5 so very interesting knight fd7 and it looks as though white center is already kind of crumbling after d5 this doesn't seem like a great way of playing it with white Leela does grab the e5 pawn, bishop e2. It just seems very speculative. Queen b6, black already has uh, an extra pawn, dark square pressure. And it doesn't seem as though the pawn sack is justified right here. And now two pawns up, and white can't even get this pawn back because of b2 here. We have a5, and Leela annoyingly clings on to the f4 pawn with this move queen f6 so currently two pawns up pretty dramatic start to a chess game knight e4 queen f5 white just castles yeah the the knight is immune because of bishop d3 winning the queen so we have knight a6 and that b4 square is very nice to use here in this structure it is a nice dark square weakness we have knight fg5 now, uh, yeah, the queen looks as though it's about to be trapped here. Uh, we have queen e5. Now, if bishop takes f4 here, there's still queen takes b2. That's good for black, because of queen d4 especially, getting the queens off. A pawn up, solid pawn up. Uh, on rook takes f4 again, queen d4 check gets the queens off. And this is just very nice. Again, pawn up for black, big advantage. Uh, so white has to be actually really careful here not to allow the queens coming off. Knight f3. The queen drops back to b8. Knight f g5 again. Again here. And now queen c7. And now leader actually gives back a pawn. So f3. Doesn't want a repetition draw. So pawn up here. Okay. But, yeah, black has got nice dark square play. We see knight f6. Knight c3, knight b4. And this does mean, actually, after knight b4, bishop f5 looks actually really strong, supported by the knight on these two squares. So there are weaknesses in the white position. This bishop is also going to be potentially dangerous on this diagonal. As, as Any time the knight moves, the bishop's got that nice diagonal, whilst its counterpart doesn't seem that happy right now. We see bishop e3, knight g4, unleashing the bishop, hitting bishop and unleashing this bishop on this diagonal. Uh, so we have uh, bishop g5, h6, bishop going back to d2, bishop d7, rook a3, king h7, h3, knight goes back to f6, knight e1, knight e8, a nice blockade square for d6 it seems, bishop f4, knight d6, knight f3, rook a e8. Now it seems as though black might want to push for e5 eventually. Uh, at the moment, it's not possible, of course, because of the d6 knight. Queen d8, unpinning. The bishop drops back, hitting c5. c5 is protected. Bishop f4. We have bishop f5 now. And there are ideas like knight c2 now and knight d4. This bishop is really nice now on this diagonal. So black's getting a really optimal setup with the knight blockading here, not in the way of the bishop. The bishop here and the knight coordinating well on, on squares like c2. We have bishop e5, but this encourages now f6. And now here, a really nice tactical move, e5, despite the knight being a seemingly tactical liability. Uh, this liberates the black position. If, e, e, if d takes, it's actually not played. Rook c1, leaving this you know, these pawns to sort of have great central pawn mobility. Now, why wasn't it taken? If we look at d takes, rook takes. If bishop takes, it's a nasty self-pin after rook d8. And here, the rooks double, basically, after taking the bishop with a big advantage 
to black. Really nice position. Look at the coordination, especially on D3. Uh, so we have Rook C1. So black's just a solid pawn up here. H5, and also now trying to get this diagonal in action. Uh, great action there. Queen D1. On Rook F1, Bishop H6 is really annoying because, for example, here, Knight C2, and the Knight's bouncing around winning the exchange anyway, for example, like this. So uh, we have Queen D1, Bishop H6, and actually the, the Rook's just left to be taken here. If Rook A1, Rook C A1, there's Knight C2, uh, so we have actually Knight H4 leaving the exchange to be taken, but it's actually not here, curiously. It could be, but it wasn't. Uh, it seems it could be. If Rook C A1 here, one example, check first and then Knight C2, uh, is winning the exchange anyway. So we have this uh, knight h4. We have bishop d7. And now uh, knight f3 leaving the rook to be taken. If the rook had moved, for example, rook here, black just gets an overwhelming position with f5. And say knight b5 taking there. And now f4 and the pawns are just rolling of the g5 e4 it looks like a, a a brilliant position indeed black's got a massive position the, the bishop is hemmed in this bishop is fantastic the central pawns are about to smash through uh, so yeah it's just given up in a little bit of a desperation uh, attempt yeah to give up the exchange it is actually taken that rook now queen d8 so the exchange up and a pawn up uh, it's not looking too good for white we have a6 b6 now the knight goes to f5. Now knight d4. Knight f1. White's pieces are very passive indeed. On knight takes d4 here. E takes wins material simply on the e file. Uh, so knight f1. Knight bc2. Now knight takes e2. Check. And then this knight comes to d4. So massive position. Exchange up. And the pawns are starting to be pushed. Now, you might think, well, hang on, the e5 pawn is hanging to two pieces. Well, we can't take with the bishop here because of knight takes f3 check and then queen takes e5. And actually, taking with the knight instead allows f4, which means that the knight's uh, in trouble here. If the knight steps back uh, here to f3, there's actually knight e2 check and that wins the exchange there so that's absolutely winning so if the knight has to take here on d7 queen takes d7 the black is now threatening f3 so for example king h1 f3 really smashes the white king position after queen takes f4 queen h4 black's got a big advantage here so yeah this is very very interesting that uh f5 yeah this this pawn really can't be taken on e5 knight 1 to d2 e4 rook e3 queen f6 knight e1 queen g5 king f2 queen h6 h4 g5 hg queen takes g5 the pawns are pretty mobile now uh, it looks as though yep there's also a massive kingside attack emerging Bishop goes back, h3, rook takes, but this just opens up. Now the h file as well as the g file, check, king g6, so now that rook h8 is possible. This is total desperation, knight e f3. Yeah, it looks as though the attack's just crashing through here with rook h8 and queen g3, for example. So this is total desperation. And the game is it's just a rook up check yep check and here it's about to be adjudicated as a win for black a rook up here it is end of the game a crushing defeat of Fisbo with the white pieces but very very dodgy handling of the four pawns attack actually two pawns down neither countersacks one pawn but with an overwhelming positional advantage uh, so, yeah, it looks as though 
Fizbo doesn't seem particularly strong the white side of the four pawns attack by the evidence of this game. If you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly. You can become a member at chessworld.net, play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance when the uh, improved menu learn from the Masters YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, see the description, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. All really appreciated. Okay, thanks very much.